October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this morning we're taking a look into a very concerning trend involving the number of young women being diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. Women under the age of 40 account for 6% of total stage 4 cases. One study shows more than 4% increase per year in stage 4 breast cancer cases in women in their 20s and their 30s from 2016 to 2015. This is concerning. The researchers don't really know why this is happening. CBS News senior medical correspondent Dr. Tara Narula spoke with 30-year-old Paige Stables. She was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer back in April. Now, Stables is a beauty editor for Allure magazine, and she wrote about living with the diagnosis in this month's issue. The thought of stage 4 breast cancer in your 20s or 30s seems unimaginable until it happens. Truly, in a moment, my worst nightmare became my reality. I was 26 years old. I was doing a self-exam and I found a lump in my right breast and within a month I underwent a bilateral mastectomy. This past March, I celebrated being three years cancer free and then around that same time I started to feel a pain in my hip. When they told you it had metastasized to your hip, what became your concerns at that point for the future? Your whole world just stops and it's a completely different conversation when you find out you have breast cancer and that, that alone is life changing and challenging but when you find out that it's stage four it just it is so different. I would be lying if I said it's easy. I've always said that positivity is my shield. In the article that you wrote, you use the word thrivers. Why thrivers? We are thrivers because we are going to be living with this the rest of our life. And an oncologist told me that it's almost like a chapter book and hopefully these are going to be really, really long chapters in terms of right now I'm doing a certain treatment and hopefully that chapter will continue for a really long time and if we need to turn the page and do another treatment then we can do that but I am not looking ahead to that ending anytime soon. Tell me a little bit about the advice that your doctor gave you. She said two simple words, celebrate life. And since that moment, that's what I've done. It's big celebrations and small celebrations and just really living my life to the fullest. Paige's cancer is stage four. She is currently undergoing hormonal therapies to manage the cancer, a monthly injection and a daily pill. She's required to get a PET scan every three months to make sure the cancer isn't spreading. Looking forward, Paige is planning her, with her wedding in Italy for next fall. Boy, does she have the right attitude. I love what she said, Tara, that positivity is her shield. Yes. I think that's something we can all learn something from listening to her words. But we were saying in the lead, doctors aren't really quite sure why this is happening. 20s, 30s is so young to get this diagnosis. Right. The experts don't know why? Well, there's no clear understanding at this point, but it is a trend both here and abroad. And there are theories about why we might be seeing this. For example, exposures in your lifestyle. So inflammation, stress, your diet, toxins. Um, also, we know that there's not great screening for women under 40, so we definitely need more research into what we could do to capture these smaller, you know, less uh, often cases of women who are young. Uh, because there's less screening, we tend to find these cancers at later stages. Also, the cancers that are occurring in these younger women tend to be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so it speaks to the fact that the biology of this type of cancer may be different. But the bottom line is it's so tricky and challenging. This is a population of women who are dealing with fertility issues if they're having treatment. In the beginnings of their you know, career, they have families. So there's a unique set of challenges around this population. She made a point of talking about the importance of, she caught it during a self-breast exam, which 
illustrates again how important it is for us to do that. Are we supposed to start at a certain age? So interestingly, self-breast exams and clinical breast exams are actually not officially recommended because the research has not backed those up as being beneficial. That being said, most experts say it's still a good idea to know how your breasts normally look and feel. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Paige caught her own cancer yes. a week after she had seen her doctor who had done an exam. So you do need to be your own health advocate. Wow. And if you feel something or see something, speak up to your doctor about it. Wow. No. When it comes to treatment, uh, chemotherapy used to be the standard, but people are moving away from that. Yes. What are the alternatives? Isn't that great? So yes. chemotherapy was really kind of the only go-to for so many years. And about 10 to 15 years ago, we started to shift towards these more targeted therapies like hormonal therapies, biologics, immunologics. And that's based on actually genetically looking at the tumor itself and figuring out what the tumor will best be responsive to. The value in that is that you're sparing women those side effects of the chemo, the Losing hair loss, hair. Yeah. the nausea, the mm -hmm. fatigue, and also nerve damage. And in my world, cardiotoxicity. We talked about this last year, but a lot of women survive their breast cancer and go on to die from cardiovascular disease mm. because of the chemo uh, that they might have received. Now, what increases the risk of breast cancer? So there are a lot of potential factors. So we talk a lot about genetics, so BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations, family history, if you yourself have a personal history previously of breast cancer, also some benign breast conditions, and then other things like if you had early onset of your periods, late menopause, if you never had children, if you never breastfed, some exposures like alcohol and tobacco. So a lot of different factors. Good to talk to your doctor about whether you might be at increased risk. What about signs and symptoms? Because I noticed she said she she felt something, and then she talked about a pain in her hip. Right. So the most common sign and symptom is going to be a new lump or mass, but certainly if you notice a change in the shape of your breast, swelling of the breast, also any change in the texture of the skin, so redness or dimpling um, or any dry, flaky skin that's kind of continuing on, nipple inversion or discharge, that's not breast milk. And then if you notice a swollen node under your arm or around your collarbone, those are things you should be pointing out to your doctor. All right, Tara. Valuable information. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's an amazing woman, and she hopes that really her story and those stories of the women she profiled will be inspirational to others because of their strength to show that there's hope even though they don't have the cure. Yeah. Well, I like her philosophy, celebrate life, right. continue living. I'm, I love that she's making going also, with her wedding plans. Yeah. I also like her philosophy of getting married in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> nice place to do it, I think. I hear. I like that, too. She's made a point of saying breast cancer does not define me. Yes, mm. cheering you on, Paige Staples, cheering you on.